the semester is over, so now it's time for yet another body review. This time round, I was not able to score some modules from the recommended schedule, ES2651 was just plain impossible due to mod rag, so I took some others instead. Also, GE mods. There are so many of them, but only one me, so the review is only on the ones I took. There was no overloading this time round, just 20 MCs, but we'll see if more modules will be taken next semester. The modules I took this time round were EE2012, Analytical Methods in ECE, EE2027, Electronic Circuits, IE2141, System Thinking and Dynamics, GEC1006 or GEH1016, Understanding Consumption, and LAJ2202, Japanese Tree. Let's start with the core electrical engineering modules with EE2012. If you already took GEA1000, the first half semester will be quite smooth sailing since it covers basic probability theories, probability mass functions, which is basically a table of possible results and their probabilities, and discrete random variable distributions with a ton of equations given for you to make use of. The midterm paper was really easy, like asking for the probability of getting two tails out of three coin flips kind of easy, so expect most of the cohort to get full marks for it. For the second half of the semester, we covered joint PMF tables, continuous RV distributions, and Gaussian distributions. The finals paper was more difficult, but it was still manageable for the most part. There were a few application questions that tried to create possible engineering scenarios for us to use the concepts learnt. We also had a small project work of using MATLAB or Python to make a code that does inverse transformation on a formula and run random values from 0 to 1 through it to get a distribution graph. The pace of the lesson seemed rather slow, but I guess it's to allow for lagging students to understand the contents better. Most of the cohort, including me, just watched the recordings at 1.75 to 2 times speed. Rewatching portions that we're unsure of a few times, and that seemed to be more than sufficient. Some don't even watch the recordings and just go through the notes itself. Good for them, I guess. The lecture theatre towards the last few weeks was basically at 10% capacity. I would say that this is more of a statistics module than an engineering one, and overall it was just eh. Next up is EE2027, the main engineering module this semester. We had a quick refresher on year 1 concepts like KVL and KCL, components like capacitors and inductors, Thevenin and the derivative Norton equivalents, AC currents, and phases. This does not seem like much, but it will still appear in the midterms and finals, so make sure to just brush up on them. We then move on to the new topics. We covered diodes, bipolar junction transistors or BJTs, and MOSFET in the first half semester. For diodes, we went through the operating properties when in AC and DC, forward and reverse biasing, and rectifier circuits. BJTs and MOSFETs were very similar, and we went through their modes of operation, DC and AC analysis, and their equivalent models in DC and AC. We also covered early effect for BJTs, channel length modulation, and body effect for MOSFETs, and a use case for MOSFETs as CMOS inverters. We covered op-amps and single-stage amplifiers in the second half semester. For op-amps, we went through the operating parameters and a ton of different circuits using op-amps from amplifying circuits to active signal filters and cases like comparators and super diode rectifiers. For single-stage amplifiers, we made use of what we learned in BJT and MOSFET to identify which circuit is being used, transform them into equivalent linear circuits, and then do DC and AC analysis on them. There are tutorials with a few great questions after each and every chapter, two lab sessions in the second half semester on MOSFET and op-amps, and no project work. Go through the notes and do the tutorials as that will help you a lot in your understanding of the contents, which is very important for your midterms and finals. From my experience and what I could gather from others after the finals, it was a complete bloodbath. There just seemed to be insufficient time for all the complicated questions, so all I can say is just really study hard for this module. After that was the common curriculum mod, IE2141. Here, we learn about systems thinking, behavior time graphs, common problematic system archetypes, and make use of Stellar Architect to create causal loop diagrams and stock flow diagrams. Lectures are done online through Zoom twice a week to accommodate for different timetables, but towards the end of the semester, Prof Lee Haupin decided to do only one of the two lecture time slots, allowing everyone to just watch the recordings and let the other session be a Q&A for better efficiency. There were a few simple lab sessions where we follow some instructions to create a CLD or SFD and tinker around with the settings to answer some questions. They were pretty straightforward. Midterms and finals were online and open book, making it a matter of how fast you can go through the notes to find the answers. So expect most of the cohort to get full or near full marks. The main bulk of the workload is the module-long project work, where your group chooses a dynamic real-life system with some problematic behaviours, create a behaviour time graph, causal loop diagram, and a functioning stock flow diagram from scratch on Stellar Architect, and try to find some potential solutions that are justified by sensitivity analysis. There is the interim report due by the end of week 7, and a final report due by the end of week 13. 
the problem selection is vital as that will determine how much research and work is required to finish the report. The whole project takes a good chunk of time from locking in a good problem system to creating the diagrams, researching for values and formulas, and all the debugging to get the system to work. Groups are also required to record a presentation for the report. Overall, I won't say that this module is difficult, but it is really tedious, so be prepared to spend a number of weeks to complete it. My GE mod of choice was GEC1006 or GH1016 for the older batches. This module introduces us to the different aspects of consumption like psychology, economics and sociology, the different points of views from consumers, producers, regulators and academics, and asks us to apply it in a report on a place of consumption. Lectures used to be face-to-face -face only without recordings, but for this semester, there were recordings on Luminous. That being said, the lectures are best taken face-to-face -face as they are interesting and have additional break sections where songs relating to consumption are played that will never make it to the recordings. The recordings were also audio only, so they are not as engaging. Tutorials were held every two weeks and had us do things like debates and discussions on articles regarding consumption. There was a 500-word individual reflection paper on an area of consumption for midterms, a 5,000-word team project report on an area of consumption, and a final test which became a 1,500-word take-home essay because of scheduling clashes with other exams. The main difficulty for me, being a non-humanity student, was the constant use of references and the specific stylistic usage of it. But then again, it's just a matter of getting good, cause that's what humanities students have to constantly put up with. As for the module itself, it was okay. You get to learn some stuff about consumption, which was the whole point of this module, so I guess it did its job. Finally, LAJ2202, which I took for my own interests. If you want to learn a language, I think university is one of the best times for you to do so. It definitely beats paying mad amounts of money and spending extra time for language classes outside. I skipped Japanese 1 and 2 from the placement test and got into Japanese 3 right away. For reference, we went through chapters 21 to 32 of Minna no Nihongo. There are 2 hours of lectures and 4 hours of tutorials split into 2 sessions every week, making it a total of 6 hours per week. This time round, the lectures were done by Morikawa-sensei who was quite enthusiastic and made going through the notes that much more entertaining. Tutorials will cover the workbook exercises, some kanji worksheets that you can download from Canvas, and there will generally be a quiz every week on the kanji, conjugation, and sentence structures learned. Most of the Canvas notifications and instructions are in Japanese, but there will be English instructions as well to ensure that everyone knows what to do. We had two projects this semester. The first was being NUS tour guides for some students from the Japanese primary school during recess week, and the second was a collaboration with a Japanese university where we had to do a presentation on a chosen topic. Of course, all of these is in Japanese. As for exams, on top of the usual midterms and finals, testing kanji, vocabulary, conjugation, reading, and listening, there was also an oral section for the midterms where we paired up, continued the textbook section C conversations, and have conversations about some chosen topics in both formal and casual styles. Despite the higher time investment, I felt that it was really worth it, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time studying this module. And that was all the modules I took this semester. I hope that you guys can learn a thing or two about the modules and be mentally prepared if and when you take them. Do check out my other videos as well. I've recently posted about my experience at the Tech Central Carnival, and I think it was quite eye-opening on what technologies NUS has to offer for us students to use. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.